This week, we're doing a liquid vapor equilibrium lab and the thermodynamics of vaporization. We're using the clausius clapeyron equation, which we will go into further detail with in the conclusion. Now, the objective of this lab is to determine the vapor pressure of an organic liquid at different temperatures and then determine the heat of vaporization as well as the normal boiling point. Now, you should remember from previous lectures that at low temperatures, very few molecules on the surface of the liquid have enough energy to escape. This results in a low vapor pressure as well. When the vapor pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure, the liquid will boil. And for more information about this, you can refer to your lab packets or your lecture notes. For this experiment, we're using an isotenoscope. This is a U-shaped tube with a sealed end and an open end. In the sealed end, you have an air bubble that's comprised of ethanol vapor, and in the rest of the tube, you have an ethanol liquid. You'll then submerge this into a water bath and have control of the temperature in the water bath. You'll also attach a pressure gauge to the open end. Now, as you increase the temperature, the vapor pressure will also increase, and as you cool the water bath and decrease the temperature, the vapor pressure will decrease as well. When the levels in both the tubes are equal, the pressure is equal as well, and this is what you will record in your lab notebook. In this week's experiment, you'll be using an isotenoscope. See how the isotenoscope has a sealed end and an open end. This will allow us to form our bubble for the experiment. You'll also be using liquid ethanol and a hand pump to vary the pressure during the experiment. And lastly, you will have a thermometer to take the temperature. Before we begin our experiment, you first need to record the atmospheric pressure and the temperature of the lab and record each to the proper significant figures in your lab notebook. And then please refer to figure 7-2 in your lab handout for the setup. Before we begin this experiment, we first have to check for leaks. In order to do this, we will use a pipette and pipette our liquid ethanol into our isotenoscope. We will do this until the ethanol is about one to two inches from the level of the closed end. See how the air bubble has formed in the isotenoscope. I will now tilt it to eliminate the air bubble. You are then going to take your isotenoscope and attach it to the vacuum hose. Once you do this, you'll then pump air into it using the hand pump. And if you see some air bubbles expand, that is expected. Now, once you can no longer squeeze the hand pump, check to make sure that the pressure on the pressure gauge, as well as the levels in the isotenoscope, are remaining constant. If they're not, there is possibly a leak, so you will have to start this part over. Also, if you see air bubbles escaping from the closed end of the isotenoscope, you will have to get a new one because it may be cracked and start this part over as well. The next step is to actually make a very small air bubble in the closed end of the tube. This is a very tedious step and you may have to repeat the process many times before you get that very small air bubble. In order to create an air bubble, take your isotenoscope and tilt it horizontally. You'll then see an air bubble inside the closed end of your tube. In order to decrease the size of the air bubble, tilt the isotenoscope slowly and tap the air bubble to break it into smaller parts. Once you have the bubble, at the closed end of the glass tube, you're going to reconnect it 
to the rubber vacuum hose and gently pump to expand the bubble. While the glass tube is still attached to the vacuum hose, you're going to break up the bubble just as you did before. Keep tapping and breaking apart the bubble in the closed end of the tube. You will then end up with a bubble that is almost completely composed of ethanol vapor. For this step, you want to create a bubble whose level is just below that of the level on the open side of the glass tube. You can refer to figure 7-3 for a diagram of this. Once you have a bubble that resembles that of figure 7.3, you're going to break the vacuum in the apparatus by using the release valve on the pump. I filled up my beaker with cold tap water and set up my thermometer using a thermometer clamp. I'm now going to submerge my glass tube into the water bath, making sure that the closed end of the tube is completely submerged. I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes and allow everything to reach equilibrium. At this point, I will be ready to start the experiment. Keep the tube in the water bath and slowly reduce the pressure in the glass tube using the hand pump. The level in the closed end should be just below the level of the open end. Lightly touch the release valve and adjust the pressure until the level in both ends of the tube are equal. Now, once the levels in both ends of the tube are equal, record the pressure and the temperature in your lab notebooks. You'll then heat the water bath using a Bunsen burner and repeat the same process at six different measurements of temperature and record the pressures as well. You will then cool the water bath by adding ice to it. Repeat this process again at six different data points recording the temperature and the pressures. In the end, you'll have a total of 10 to 12 measurements of temperature and pressure. In our conclusion, we're going over the clausius clapeyron equation. You can refer to your lab packets for this equation. Now for your treatment of data, you'll be making a table of your pressure and the temperatures that you recorded from the lab of the ethanol. The pressure is not going to be the pressure that you determine on the pressure gauge. The vapor pressure is equal to the pressure on the gauge minus the atmospheric pressure, which was constant in your lab. Now you'll be making a graph of the pressure versus the temperature. In the first graph, you'll see a parabola-like shape, but when you make your second graph, you'll be graphing the natural log of the pressure versus the inverse of the temperature. This will give you a straight line with a negative slope. You'll then take the equation of this line and compare it to your clausius clapeyron equation. Here, notice that your slope is equal to negative the heat of vaporization over the constant R. If you know your slope and you know the constant R, you can easily determine the heat of vaporization. Make sure to read your lab packets thoroughly and see your professor if you have any questions. Enjoy the lab!